Praise the Lord. Everybody get your red book and let's sing victory in Jesus. We've got victory in Jesus today, don't we? Amen. One
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The song is No Time Wasted, calling on Jesus. <laughs> you could call upon to be saved. Amen. And he's that rock that can heal your body. He's that rock that can give you that peace that passes all understanding that will keep your mind and your hearts through Christ Jesus. And I pray for everybody that hears my voice today. If you don't have Jesus as your Savior, I ask you right now to call upon his name because he loves you. He died for you and he rose again to give you victory. That's all you need to do is just call upon him and believe in him. And I thank the Lord that I call on him. 
him one time and he saved my soul. I've called on him many times and he's helped me when I was in trouble. I've called on him many times and he's helped other people. He's brought people into my pathway that I've brought to the Lord in the last month or two. And I thank God. Some people say the internet's evil, but I know that God uses it for the ones that lets him use them. Because there's been people that's not even talked to me for years and they brought me on the computer and they said, I don't and I said, all you have to do is call out Jesus and he'll save you. And one of the friends came from about two hours away one time to the church when we was at the other church. And she gave her heart to the Lord right there on that computer that night. And she was so bound by other things. But God delivered her. And I prayed to believe it for many souls to be saved as we come into this place today. As we minister unto others that they will be saved, they'll be delivered, they'll be set free. The chains will be broken in Jesus' name. He'll be Thank you, Jesus. I praise your Lord's name. I thank you, Jesus. If you like the Lord today, let's try to sing this together. Jesus is the rock in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes when you need to pray, he puts people upon your mind. 
And when you do that, and you're doing something for the Lord, let's all be ready to go to heaven. I get down on my knees every day and I pray. Y'all pray for me.
is Frank. Pastor uh, Lagos, would you come up and sing this one? Uh, I can give it a shot. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'll
I'm just getting started. You read on it. On past the scripture that we read, you find out a lot of other things happen, and, and Jesus comes to the disciples. He said, Don't touch me yet, for I'm not made full yet. I'm not fulfilled Come yet. On. And Thomas says, hey, It's not him. Unless I can stick my finger in the in the holes in his hands and thrust my hand in the side of, of Jesus, then I can't yeah. believe. Yeah. Now, Thomas. You see, Thomas didn't see the significance of the napkin. Right? Amen. Right. Thomas didn't see the significance of the napkin. Right? Yeah. So Jesus made his wish come true. He walks in, he says, Thomas, take the finger and stick it in the nail hand. Right. The prints in my hand. And, and he said, Thrust your hand in my side where the blood and the water come forth. Go ahead and just thrust your thrust your hand up in my side, Thomas. He said, Blessed is those. Yeah. You, you see and you believe, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's us here today. If we believe, we believe with this seeing. And Jesus said that we are blessed. We are blessed because we believe. We are blessed because we're seeing the, net, the significance in the napkin that Jesus left laying in the tomb. You see, that tomb wasn't just any tomb. It was brand new. It just had been hewn out of the rock. There was no escaping it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, see, you dig your way out of a out of a big limestone yeah. in three days. Yeah. It's not only that they wrote a stone over in front of the the grave. Yeah. And Pilate sent two centurions down to watch it. Yeah. You see, they sat there. The soldiers sat there watching it. And not only did he do that, he went a little step further. For fear that the disciples would steal his body, he went and put the Roman seal on the stone. Yeah. That means nobody can touch it. Yeah. Nobody can touch that stone. Yeah. The seal of Rome was up on the stone. Nobody could touch it. But you see, there was somebody who came down and they said the guy was asleep. Amen. And you see, they wrote that stone probably without even touching it, brother. They probably spoke to the stone and the stone rolled away. And you see, Jesus got up and he walked out of the tomb, still burying the prince and the nail prince that he bore for you and I. That he bent the stripes across his back. That he bore for our healings is what Isaiah says. He bore for the healings of us. He walks out in the glory. Come on. And the disciples did not believe. Because they did not know the scripture. Now you know that if you start doing an in-depth study on prophecy of the resurrection, they try to say there is none. They tried, well, there is no prophecy in the Old Testament about the resurrection. There's prophecy of his birth. There's prophecy of his crucifixion, but not resurrection. Why would John write that? That they knew not the Scripture. Right? We knew not the Scripture at the time of the prophecy that Jesus was going to rise again on the third day. And, and, and if you read it and study it, you find out when Jesus died, there's a whole bunch of people that come out of their graves. Oh, yeah. Huh? What about that? What about that? It wasn't just Jesus who rose, but the saints. And the, yeah. the saints, they come out of their graves, walking around Jerusalem. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you talk, see these people now, they're obsessed with zombie apocalypses yeah. and, and yeah. this and that. And I thought, man, what if they'd have been alive when Jesus said it is finished? Yeah. What if they'd have been alive when that veil was torn and ripped hither and thither? And the saints walked out of the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine hardly seeing your great grandfather come out of the grave and you're walking through the street and there he stands and, and you say, Granny? Hey, been dead for 50 years. Uh -huh. But you see, Jesus, the great Lamb of God, on the third day rose, left us some significant power. He said, I give you power even greater than my own. But we accept, we don't, we don't accept that. How can we be as, as powerful as you know you're not? And he said you had it. He said that you could access it. conversation the other day about uh, I, I've been watching a lot of old videos and stuff from these ministers that, that's, that's dead and gone. They've been, they've been, they come and gone. And I'm telling you, those people and these musicians, they had a thing called anointing. Have anybody heard about anointing? They had a thing called anointing. 
They had a thing called anointing. I said, Dad, is there anointing left us or, or have we lost it? What, what's happened? I can't explain it, but that same anointing that those men of God had, I've not seen in a very long time. If God has not removed it from the church, then it's still there. It's still accessible. You see, God said that the napkin that was folded up, the napkin that was left, He said, I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished with you, Brother Harvey. He said, I'm not finished with you. He said, I'm not finished with you. Don't fret. Don't think and worry about the past, about what's coming upon you. Just give God the praise. Eat out and eat out and eat out and eat out. Don't stop. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus step out on the cloud of glory and he comes and splits the eastern sky and I see the dead in Christ rise. I'm not going to shut up about Jesus. I'm not going to shut up about what he did. I'm not going to stop preaching the kingdom of God. I'm not going to stop preaching salvation, Brother Hardy. I'm not going to stop preaching sanctification and living right. Amen. Yes. You see, we're here on a Easter Sunday. I don't know how you other preachers feel about this, but it's an honor and a privilege that God chose me to be able to bring a message out, message out on such a significant day. But there's not another holiday that we recognize that is as powerful as the one we're sitting here today. You see, without the bloodshed and without the resurrection, We'd all be destined for hell. Because there was no atonement for sin. Amen. There's no atonement for sin. But Jesus, God said, God used Abraham. God used Abraham to take Isaac up on the hill to see if Abraham loved God enough to sacrifice his own son. Yes, he did. Sometimes I think if Abraham had refused, would we have ever got Jesus? Sometimes I wonder if Abraham had told God, but you better pick somebody else, would we have ever got Jesus? Significance. 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 A sign. A simple nap says so much. Amen. A simple napkin that says, don't give up, sister. It ain't worth giving up. He's not took you home yet, sissy. He's not took you home yet. And until he gets ready to take you home, sissy, don't you ever give up. Don't you think that the world's crumbling down on you because he said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's nothing that can tear your spirit or tear you down. You just got to walk in the spirit and tell the flesh, get behind me. There's no time to waste on earth today. We've, we're coming close to the end. Amen. We're coming close. This, this very well could be the last, last Easter that we ever get to celebrate here on earth. Amen. Oh, think about that. Right. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Ain't it enough to praise God today, knowing that we're not promised tomorrow? He may not come back and get the church tomorrow, but who knows? He may come back and get you. Significance. I'm preaching about significance. The significance that Jesus showed us on the day of his resi uh, resurrection. The significance that Jesus left little signs all around. You see Mary come into the garden early. And, G and she stayed there and tarried after the, the disciples of Dome went back home. And she looked into the sepulcher, the tomb. And there stood two angels dressed in white. And they began to speak to her. And she rose up and looked behind her and there stood Jesus. There he stood. There he stood. Man, blessed was Mary Magdalene. Blessed was Mary Magdalene. Yeah. He stood there. And she, I, I imagine that she was in such an emotional piece of, of, of human at that moment that she wanted to run up there and hug his neck. But he said, touch me not. Yeah. Touch me not. Yeah. Sometimes us as preachers need to tell some people not to touch us. Huh? Amen. Come on. 
The Bible says, touch not his anointed one, huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Significance of just a small napkin left laying in an empty tomb. And I said that tomb is empty. I didn't say it was there where the body in the napkin was folded. I said it was a t empty tomb where the linens that they had wrapped him in with the spices and all the burial procedures that the Jews did in that day, the only thing left that was neatly wrapped, Amen. put aside, was a napkin. Was a napkin. Was a napkin. Was a napkin. Jesus got up. On that third day, I could imagine him laying on the on the bed, the slab of rock, whatever it was he laying in, he's sitting there. And he said, I wonder how many will get this. Yeah. I wonder how many will catch the significance of what I just left for you to see. Yeah. I wonder how many of you will see that I said with a simple napkin that I'm not done. I'm not done here. I'm not done in your life. I'm not done in your life. See, that happens for you, baby. He's not done with you yet. Amen. The significance of a napkin. Yes. The significance of a death of the Son of God. Yeah. And the resurrection of the Son of God. Yeah. The significance. Man, that's a mighty powerful word. The significance. Sometimes preachers will leave you little bread crumbles and you don't even catch them. Yeah, and you'll be three days down the road and the preacher and you'll go and you'll smack yourself right in the face. That preacher said that last Sunday yeah. or last Tuesday yeah. or last yeah. Friday yeah. when it was in church. And I'm just now getting that. Yeah. Sometimes God's got to smack us in the face and we don't catch it. We don't even catch it. <laughs> According to the word here in John, the disciples didn't catch the meaning of the napkin left. And they were Jews. Yeah. It was their law. Yeah. And their tradition. Yeah. Come on. Preach it. And they go back home. Probably wondering. Man, where did they take him? Yeah. And we'll, we'll never get to see the body of Jesus again. Where did they take him? Come on. Jesus taught us all this stuff. Preaching to us on the mountains. Preaching to us in the vows, preaching to us in the synagogues and the cities. He's taught all these scriptures, but they knew not that he would rise again. Yeah. Psalms is pretty clear about it. Yeah. Isaiah is pretty clear about it. Ezekiel, even in Exodus, you've got prophecy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But they knew not the scripture. Amen. But it was laying there, I'm sure, in a white linen cloth napkin, something similar to this. The significance of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. I'm not finished. My own people chose Barabbas. Yeah. My own people chose Barabbas and let me suffer. But yeah. I'm not done with you yet. But you see, I'm going to do one greater. The Jews are not only the chosen ones anymore. I'm going to rip the veil hither and thither. And I'm going to bring in thy Gentiles. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'm going to adopt them. And I'm going to love them the same as I love my people. Yeah. I'm going to love them the same and I'm not done with them. I'm going to call many to preach my gospel. And it may not be a Jew, but it may be a Gentile. Amen. God knows no racism. God knows no racism. Uh, he knows no segregation. Right. You know, that's all the death. We're all human. No matter what yes. language we speak. Right. No matter what color our skin is. Yeah. Right. Jesus loves us all. Yes, exactly. Yes, he does. The Jews are his chosen people. Yeah. The one thing that we should, we're, we're going to have problems with is that the Jews will get a second chance after his coming. According to Revelation, they're going to get a second opportunity. But we don't. We better get ready now. We better not wait till the days of tribulation. Or we better not wait till Jesus splits the clouds of glory and say, Oh Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Oh Lord, I know I was the one that deserved the cross. I know I was the one to be laid in a borrowed tomb, but you took my sin. You took everything that I had done. Amen. You saw it into my future. It's too late to be 
sorry then. Amen. It's too late to holler, oh Lord, Lord. Amen. Then the judgment day is going to come and you're, you're going to get that opportunity to go up there and before God. I don't think you'll be able to say a single word. I don't think you're going to be able to give an excuse. And we have some religion that teaches that you're going to be able to you know, plead your case to God. I don't think so. Just, Revelation says every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that He is Lord of Lords. That's all we're going to get to do and say, you what you was these preachers and all these prophets and all these prayer words, they've been right all these years and I've not listened. You are Lord of Lords. And he's either going to say, Come in, my good and faithful servant. You've been a faithful over a few things. But I'm going to make you ruler over many. Or he's going to look at you and say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. I never knew you. Man. The man who created you, the God that created you and made you who you are, breathed the breath of life. Could you imagine him saying, I never knew you? That's a scary thought, isn't it, Daniel? Very scary. That's a scary thing. And we want to deny resurrection. We want to deny this and deny that Jesus was the Son of God. You can't talk to a Muslim. Let's just say we recognize Jesus, but he wasn't nothing more than Muhammad. He was just a prophet. Man, they were, are they so wrong? Amen. You know, when you want things done and you're praying for somebody and you see a miracle happen, it's in whose name? Jesus. Whose name does it occur under? Jesus. Amen. When you're in the midnight wee hours of the morning and you're praying for a son or daughter or a grandchild that's out in the world and they come to the Lord right there at your house in the morning, whose name did that happen under? Jesus. The one who was resurrected from the dead. The one who come out and left a significant symbolism that he's not done yet. And he's not done today. Significance. All right. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus spoke in parables a lot. A lot. Yeah. And I don't know if he did that to keep from being so blunt like myself. I'm, I'm very blunt. Or if it, it, I, I don't know why the parables. But Jesus spoke in parables. And, and he, he told those stories as these children back here could understand them. Today you go to church and it's like you've been in a lecture hall at college. Words I can't even get off the end of my tongue or spoke in churches today. Amen. If I don't understand them, there's a good chance 40, 50% of the people in the church house can't understand what you're saying either. But Jesus spoke so simply that the children even understood what he was saying. He spoke so simple that if you have zero education and you can't read and write, His message is still there for you. Amen. That Holy Ghost is still going to come. It's going to knock yeah. on the doors of your heart. Amen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's your choice whether you yeah. accept and believe without sin. Amen. Don't be Thomas. Thomas is a significant lesson for us all to learn. I can't see the wind, but I can see the effects that it has on the trees and the branches. I know that it takes that abundance of air that's rolling around this planet for me to be able to survive. I don't see it, but I believe it's there. I didn't stick my fingers in the nail print hands of Jesus, but I know that He come out of the grave. And I know that He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. Amen. Yes, He is. It's as simple as a belief. Yes, he is. You know, we send our children to school today. I'm closing. 
Somebody get a song. Prepare. Yeah, we send our children to school today, and I'm not saying our teachers are are atheists or agnostic, but the government and the state forces them to teach these theories. And that's what they call them there. They call them this is a theory about evolution. Our teachers are forced into teaching things that's not biblical, but might have come straight out of the Quran or come from Harry Krishna's religion years ago or Buddhism. It's, it's okay for them to teach that stuff in our schools today. But if we mention the resurrection of Jesus Christ, go to the office, young lady. We can't talk about that here. The persecution of the church has already begun. Yeah. Amen. It began back whenever, I guess it was in the 60's, whenever they took prayer and Ten Commandments out of school. That The per persecution of the church had already began at that point. The media is going to tell you that Donald Trump and all these higher powers in our country, they're devils because they mention God. They demonize them because they won't stand on the ground of murdering little babies. They crucify them because they won't stand up for the rights of homosexuality to be married in this country. And they demonize them because of that. Persecution of the church. The last time I read our amendments, we were entitled to free speech. The last time I read my amendments, I was entitled to get up here and preach against the sin. Come on. Preach against sin. It's not that I hate you. It's I love you enough to tell you what you're doing wrong. I love you enough to tell you you need to get in an altar of prayer and begin the sanctification process that Jesus set up for us. Sanctification. Most people don't know what that word means. They don't know what sanctification means. It's talking about purifying your body so the Spirit can dwell in it and come out. And he knows what justification is. Justification, sanctification. This is stuff you don't hear preached. You sure don't hear it on TV, preachers. <laughs> You sure don't hear it. And you don't even hear the word Holy Ghost anymore. It's Holy Spirit. And most of them teach that you don't have to seek for that, that you get it when you get saved. You already got all that power. You just got salvation and you got all that power, Harvey. You didn't have to seek or fast or pray or nothing for that. You got it all. You got it all. No, none of that stuff comes without sanctification, without being pure. And none of that stuff would have never come without Jesus saying, I'm not finished yet. Amen. None of that stuff would ever came. He, he could not have sent the Holy Ghost to dwell all here on earth without Him saying, I'm not born again. The Holy Ghost didn't come to earth and dwell in us until after Jesus left because He said, I'm going to send you another comforter which is called the Holy Ghost. According to the Word, Jesus never lied. He never committed a sin. The only truly perfect man that ever lived on earth. Today, as we come to a close, I know there's people, you're saved, but are you sanctified? You're saved, but is Jesus done with you yet? Salvation at the end of the road, folks. I want to encourage you. If nothing else, is whenever a minister preaches the word to you, you said it this morning. Follow along with him. Yes. Study. Yes. Make sure what that minister's preaching you in the pulpit is truth. Yes. The Bible don't lie. No. Men lie. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 Men get confused and don't even realize that they've lied. Yeah. That's why Paul said, sin not little children, but if you do have an advocate with the Father who is just around, we can sin and not even know we've ever sinned. Paul said, I die out daily. What was he talking about? He was talking about he repented daily. Whether or not he knew in his mind that he had blatantly went out and committed sin, he didn't. Sometimes you miss your little sins. 
Sometimes you miss your little habits and your little hang-ups and you don't even realize that, hey, I've sinned against God. That's why the Bible says have a prayer life. That's why He teaches us relationship instead of salvationship. you got to get saved. you also got to have a relationship. you also got to understand until He's done with you, you're not going nowhere. I'm living proof of that. I'm living proof of that. Go ahead and sing. These altars are open. I encourage you all to pray. I encourage you all to go study. Get in this Word. Because if anything, you can come to church every time the doors are open and listen to a preacher preach. Amen. But you've got to get in that Word for yourself if you want clarity and understanding. Amen. Praise God. We thank you. That was some good food. I know everybody's waiting on that back there, but that was the best food you can have. You know, there's one more thing that that Hanshka that he folded up and laid down there meant. Man. And he mentioned the fact about, you know, going to people's homes and eating. When they fold that Hanshka up and laid it down beside of that plate, it meant, I've enjoyed the stay, enjoyed the food, I'll come back. That's another thing that that handshake of meant there. Is I'm coming back. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, that was good. Good.
more songs here while we finish it up back later. <coughs> what number? Uh, <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Child. 
Dismiss uh, service and bless food at the same time. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful service that we've had today. Father God, we ask that you bless the food that we're about to receive. It. And Father God, we ask that you bless each and every one that's here with us today. And Father, we ask that you bring them back at your appointed time. And this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.